I came into the show knowing a little bit about like comparisons between um, Promise Neverland and it having more of a, you know, darker mystery behind it. So, um, yeah, I want to hear your guys' thoughts first of this latest episode, if you don't mind. Uh, well, I have to admit that I kept on hearing people say like uh, in general, like online and, and whatnot, saying that this was also partly like a slice of life genre a bit. And... I don't know exactly what the official definition of slice of life is, <laughs> but like this is not how I would describe it, and I I personally mean that in a positive way. Um, I this can episode see slice featured, of life, yeah. Even now, after I mean, well, first episode, now, sure, but, but like, even with the second episode, slice of life, I can kind of see it. It was it was just it was just like just the maid and like and uh the noble girl then like mm -hmm. just those two like i guess it's more of like normal every date it's like supernatural mm -hmm. it'd, be like, it'd be supernatural slash slice of life so mm -hmm. that's how i yeah because I I like that's that. what like natsume yujin show is like that was like um supernatural and slice of life but yeah this this second episode um they uh they do venture outside of the bedroom that we've been seeing and there is a scene with um another woman another shadow in her face and they've apparently been correctly linked with each other. And I thought the scene was done really well. Like, I felt like it was tense. Definitely reminded me more of um, uh, Promise Neverland on days. <laughs> uh, again, mm -hmm. I mean that in the best way possible. I don't really know how high of a level of a creep factor we're supposed to get out of this. Because, again, I know nothing. But my, my, my radar was g going off. <laughs> I don't know. What did you, what did you think, David? Um, wasn't really like, wasn't really a creep factor. It was like it was more uncomfortable no? feeling, like uh more yeah like, when like when they were talking when the when Sarah and the other doll and Mia when they were talking that was more of a creep fact uh more uncomfortable factor. It was more I guess the last scene was more creepy I guess, but mm -hmm. I guess I like, think what really contributed to that later scene with uh Kate and Emilico running into Sarah and Mia mm -hmm. in the garden was what we had seen of Sarah prior to that when um, Emilico, yeah, you know, too. first gets to go outside of Kate's room mm -hmm. and is, you know, introduced to the other um, living dolls who are, mm -hmm. you know, responsible for cleaning the entire, you know, grounds of the uh, Royal Shadow family and how joyous of a interaction that was. Because um, you could see, you know, the excitement in Emilico's face when she got to see, you know, all these other dolls just like her and, you know, kind of this joy and they sing songs with one another to, you know, clean up this house, which as a living doll, you know, that's one of the things that I guess innately they love to do. They love to serve um, and how that, you know, very strongly contradicts with when they run into Sarah and Mia and Sarah being a completely different, you know, person, essentially, as this real mimic or mirror of Mia and like showing the emotions and Mia just absolutely chastising both Emilico and Kate for being, you know, failures in terms of like what a, uh, a shadow family and living doll relationship could, should be. Cause I think even, um, Mia had threatened saying like, Hey, don't let, don't make me tell like grandfather shadow, like that you guys are, you know, mm -hmm. obsolete. Cause he'll throw you away like nothing. So that's like kind of an, another layer now of like, all right, how, like, what is the goal of the relationships mm -hmm. between the Shadow family and their, their living serving counterparts? And more so, you know, this grandfather, I'm really interested to see what he's all about because he sounds like he's just kind of a no-nonsense, like his way or the highway, and he's got some some devious kind of ideologies as well for, like, kind of how their their royal family came to be in the first place. Yeah, um, One so thing I... Oh, you go ahead, because mine's oh. not about the story, but... <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I was just going to say, um, I thought it was really odd that not a single living doll told Emilico about, I guess, you know, what to expect for her future or how to interact, you know, when the shadow family is around, um, you know, proper decorum. Like, that seems fairly important if you're once you're leaving the bedroom. I also find it interesting that Kate didn't say anything about it. Like, cause like that, that, that previous thing, it could have just been for the narrative. It, it just is what it is. You know, we'll learn it as it happens and it might not have any further meaning. But I also thought it was interesting that Kate didn't say anything to Emilico, Emilico at any point. Like Kate to me yeah. definitely has, I mean, she, she lives in the house. She is part of the shadow family, but she still somehow seems a little bit like ignorant to me as well. Like she doesn't even have like the full story. Like she still seems kind of 
innocent. And Definitely. Uh, I'm curious to see why and how far that goes. And <laughs> yeah, I think I, again, know, I have you, nothing you, to go off of. You hit the nail on the head there. It's like we don't truly understand like what is the hierarchy of mm-hmm. the shadow family and and to your point you know was kaylee newly kind of in inducted into the shadow family even from you know the very first episode we see these children being brought to this house and mm-hmm. drinking whatever you know like, turns them into these uh these shadow family beings um but but i think the other thing as you mentioned taylor is like i wasn't necessarily surprised that the other living dolls didn't tell anything further to Amiliko because I almost feel like it's this thing where there's still just a lot of mystery and a lot of kind of facades being Mm -hmm. put on where you know they're just kind of doing what needs to be done from purely a facial level because they're either being monitored or there's not really kind of yet this secret kind of area that they can really you know say things how they are Um, because I think that is one thing with Sarah as well that we got to see. Um, I remember there was a scene where as she was walking either back from the interaction um, with Kate and Emilico in the garden, she kind of had this look of like upset on her face where, you know, she's realizing that she's just being used by uh, Mia, her, her shadow counterpart. And she's not really, you know, with it, even though when she's out in front of public, you know, she has to put up that facade. Mm -hmm. And then to David's point, you know, the final scene that we see when Sarah returns to her sleeping quarters and we see all these, you know, handprints and everything of, of shadow soot all over the place. That also makes me think like that Mia is taking things further and potentially has gone into Sarah's room and, you know, either just beaten her or, or done something very dark because mm-hmm. obviously the shadow family don't view these living dolls as human. Mm-hmm. They're just there to mimic their emotion and serve mm-hmm. them. Mm -hmm. so again there's so many theories and things that are really just drawing me in personally and i i can't wait to to learn more about the the other kids as well because i think there's what five other or four other individuals from the opening that we haven't yet seen yet so yeah something like that man a lot to unfold do we think they're even related this family do we even know that i don't think so because all the characters look so different and again drawing back to that first scene when the kids are being brought into Mm -hmm. this shadow family i feel like they're just you know hand picking kids like out of whatever this dystopian world is and just indoctrinating them to continue this bloodline or whatever i need to go back and watch that scene (laughs) i didn't pick up on that quite at the same time i'll go back and watch it because like it's a huge house and like i was thinking like do they all these living dolls do they really have a counterpart like a shadow a shadow counterpart that's a lot of people to have so i'm just thinking like there's Mm. like if they if they're not all connected then it's gotta be a bunch of extra living dolls and then i was and i know like justin you're you you still think they're like they're humans but i don't know just when when emiko just fell from that that i guess second floor story and like didn't get injured at all i was like yeah that, so, uh, that definitely like, led me more to like, injured. okay. She got a scrape. She got a scrape on oh, okay. her David. Come why, on. <laughs> why, don't you, why don't you jump off your second story, <laughs> second story floor yeah. and you can walk with a scrape, Taylor. How about that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think it was interesting too, kind of to your point of when um, Amilico returned from after the time that Kate got like really upset for what she did to the doll and, and Amilico got super dirty and then she sat in the like cleaning yeah. chamber and it's literally just that huge air tunnel like pushing against them to get all the soot off them. So that was a point where I was like, okay, you know, more so maybe they're not human, but I, man, yeah. I can't help but feel like there is something where it's like, they could have be been almost too easy point. for them to be. Maybe yeah, at some point, so. but it's just, yeah, well, I guess, because usually in anime, like, like the humong- humongous, like it's usually like are really artificially made and it doesn't even have to be from humans. So yeah. And it could, it could still be that too. And that maybe at some point they're going to strive to want to be more than just a, a living doll like we've yeah. seen in, in other kind of humunculus or doll uh, related kind of uh, environments. Um, yeah. And then um, I'll just yeah. say real quick, um, this episode, the first half was actually, the life of thing, I was actually not getting interested as much, but it was after that second half that I actually got more interested in, in the show. So. Feel totally. that. Um, yeah, the yeah. only other thing I would say is the last little thing is I am interested in terms of when Kate got really upset and the soot like solidified. Mm-hmm. And Amilico couldn't break it off. So I'm interested just to see more of like what kind of abilities or uh, I guess um, like 
properties their properties they exactly. thank you. have. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah. Oh my God. God, I just remember all these little things. I, I know we're probably well over time here, but I'm also interested in Amelico being able to, to read more and more because I know she was trying to read the notes in her room in this episode. And there was like a certain mm -hmm. like word that she couldn't read. And I felt mm -hmm. like that was about to be just another like lore. Oh, I didn't of, like didn't something think about deeper. That. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So again, man, this just uh, really gets cool. my brain flown of like all the conspiracies and no, things. No, it's, it's great that you're enjoying this. So. Yeah. So that's why it's, it's definitely all in my top two or three, I'd say, for yeah. this season for me. Same yeah, for me. I, I just moved the I just moved the time to ten minutes. <laughs> <Let's> <laughs> go. We're, we're good. It's fine. <laughs>